As I was walking through my organic, bespoke, raised garden, I began to ponder the meaning of life. Why hadn't my cucumbers grown to their full size, long, girthy, and full of seed? It must be because of something I had done to displease Heavenly Father. He designed the glorious curves of the cucumber, and I was clearly not worthy of the passionate pulp. What could I do to make myself more worthy? What does it mean to be? What does mean mean? Well, that all depends on what your definition of is, is. All these thoughts kept rushing through my head. I tried to comfort my son, and he ran away. He must also be thinking about the big things in life. I couldn't help but think that he reminded me, with his big white fur, of a line of pure, uncut Colombian cocaine. As the day went on, time was getting away from me, and my head chip James informed me that I had had too many silly thoughts of cucumbers in my head, and instead I should devote that time to serving him instead. I look forward to serving him all day and night, my knees bloody from prayer and submission. What a glorious godly day I had frolicking amongst the weeds and dog feces. For one day, I will be in the cold ground, my bones giving new life to the flora and fauna. Greetings, everyone. It is I, Jen, and this is Fundy Fridays. And here on my channel, I talk about different aspects of Christian fundamentalism, American conservative politics, pop culture, and pretty much whatever I want to talk about. I am on my screened-in porch. It is one of my favorite places in the house. The cats love it out here. And I'm in a little corner on the Papa fan. And I just want to look cute for you guys. And I kind of wanted it to be like one of those days when you have a a nice teacher that takes you outside to do the lessons when the weather is nice. So I figured we would do that. My name is Jen. I have been kind of half-ass researching fundamentalism since I was a teenager and then seriously researching it for about two or three years now. I did used to do my makeup in every video, but that got to be really hard to multitask like that. Kelly Havens has been highly requested and I thought I'd check her out. There is not a lot, a lot of information about her because I I feel like she really is just like a regular person. It just so happens that the Fundy Snark community is full of internet stalkers, uh, of which I am one. I'm not talking shit. Well, I'm talking a little bit of shit, but just to let you know. Oh my goodness. Hello. This is a Halloween treat. My black cat is going to rub his face all over the camera. Oh my goodness. Hello, Abraham. Before we begin, I would like to shout out Fundy Snark Uncensored and the Leaving Eden podcast because they are one of the only media entities that have put anything out about her. And Kelly is very private and I kind of feel bad talking about her, but as we'll get into it, she does have some problematic views. So, I mean, let he, he who is without sin cast the first stone. I do believe Brendan Fraser said that in the Bible. And today is a very spooky, scary episode. A very aesthetically pleasing episode, I hope, because I want to honor Kelly. And we are, of course, going to be talking about Kelly Haven Stickle today. She is a fundy micro-influencer, if I've ever seen one. And I would describe her looks as if Florence Welch lived in rural Ohio. And sadly, Kelly is not famous enough to have her own entry on Fundy Wikia. However, I would like to argue that she get her own entry on Wikifeet. I don't know if that's a real website, but I know that these pictures are very real and they are burned into my retinas. Kelly Haven Stickle is known for her holier-than-thou captions written in a very wordy and frivolous and romantic way. Mm, I agree as well. Shallow and pedantic. It's just too much. It's just too much. There's the definition of too much. She has a little house on the prairie aesthetic and she does have some associations with a woman who goes by the name of Girl in Calico on social media who is more overtly racist. So I think that is something to remember. Now, I did have to use my weak little female brain to piece this together because Kelly did not have a Fundy Wikia page, as I said, but I did just type in to Google Kelly Haven's birthday, and lo and behold, I found a post where she says yesterday was her birthday. So I did a little math um, and found out that she is turning 29 this year in December, which means she was born in 1993, which is when I was born. So up yours, woke moralists. Let's see who cancels who. <laughs> 
So if you didn't catch all that, Kelly Havens Reed was born December 17th, 1993. And if that's incorrect, Kelly, I'd love to hear from you. And a lot of the stuff that I know about her is from Reddit. I did do a deep dive into her Tumblr, but it goes way, like all the way back to when she was a teenager. And even then, it's still like kind of like, ooh, it feels fucked up to read a teenager's posts, especially because I know she's my exact age. And I'm like, damn, that's kind of what my podcast is about. I'm reading my cringe posts from when I was 16. So I can't imagine. From what I've seen on Reddit, Kelly grew up in a military family, so they traveled a lot. That would probably contribute to her loneliness. From what I've read, it seems like her family was mildly religious, nothing too um, interesting. And then when she was in eighth grade, she got baptized officially and started, you know, living that Christian life, but more earnestly. Around the 2010s, it seems like Kelly started dressing like a hipster. Um, No shame there. I'm pretty sure all millennials went through that exact same phase. She had short hair, wore regular clothes. Um, She listened to secular music. I mean, I even have a clip of her dancing to quite a few copyrighted songs. We'll see how much of that I can play. And she has always been interested in photography, and I will say, you know, up front, I think she is a fantastic photographer. Not all of her poetry is terrible, and sometimes she does move me with her words. She's cute, she's artsy, you know, she's a little manic pixie dream fundy. What's not to love? Um, After high school, Kelly went to Kenyon University. She had a little bit of trouble with her roommate, or maybe I should say her roommate had a little bit of trouble with her. Um, According to an AMA with somebody who went to the same college as Kelly, her freshman roommate had issues with Kelly's beliefs, notably homophobia. The roommate situation was pretty famously bad. Kelly's roommate moved out first semester because of some of Kelly's beliefs, notably homophobia and behavior, and eventually was interviewed by a college newspaper story about bad roommates. I don't want to get into it too deeply for the sake of her roommate's privacy, but suffice it to say that it was not a good roommate match. Speaking for myself, once I heard about it, I had no interest in ever talking to her. And guess what? I have the, uh, the interview. (laughs) Kelly Reed, class of 16, for one, wanted that relationship. By the end of her sophomore year, Reed had become increasingly disillusioned with the Kenyan community, feeling the students needed to regain our sense of dignity in a place other than being successful in reading text and writing essays. The room and board plan seemed stifling to Reed. Human beings connect by doing things together creatively and trying to collaborate in basic situations. And so much is done for us here on campus, she said. For her, it felt like there was an iron wall between campus and Knox County. A few hundred feet past Bexley, and you feel like you're in another world. She felt more inspired beyond that wall. Reed decided to work at the Gambier Deli over the summer while living in the village on West Woolside Drive. And suddenly, I just started to feel the world was much more exciting and much more intimate than college made me feel. Reed grew close to her lodgers, Mike and Stacy Bailey, and ended up going to church with them and forming relationships with many of the congregants. Wanting to continue living off campus, she contacted Towton. He considered her appeal for a few weeks, but ultimately decided she had to remain on campus. Reed briefly considered transferring, and although she decided to stay, she said she thinks Kenyon lacks some kind of communal stability, and that an attempt to live off campus is an attempt to recreate a stable community. Okay, well, I'm sorry that you went to a 
secular college and then decided that it was too secular for you. So after Kelly's roommate complained about her, she actually went on Tumblr to tell her side of the story. To be a reflection. Apparently the moment my roommate sees me, she wishes to escape me. Why? I have hardly exerted any sense of self over her. I'm just here. My look of speculation, contemplation, and the way I get animated when I read, she may also think of me as the weaker, since I study what arises from my own nature. And she studied the imposition of the human reasoning faculty on human nature, namely reductionism, the social sciences. She's a materialist, and I am a reticent poet. We never discuss or even expose this divisive fact. Maybe it's just evident as the clouds are evident through their reflection on the water. The water which says nothing of the clouds, but lets the clouds speak through it. So it seems like from her Tumblr and from a recent podcast she kind of mentioned she went from originally wanting to get a philosophy degree to pivoting and then hating philosophy. Currently she's got her own Christian philosophy. According to this user, I'll put their name on the screen because I can't remember, um, who did a recap of all of Kelly Haven's podcasts. Now Kelly would like to tell us yet another story about Kenyon and her college experience. Kelly was still studying philosophy, but she decided she was going rogue and making her own course of philosophy. A Christian philosophy, if you will. Kelly had all the key players, C.S. Lewis, Chesterton, and and her Bible. She also had a stack of journals by Philander Chase, a bishop of Ohio from the 1800s who established Kenyon. He loved God and founded Kenyon as a seminary. And then apparently also according to this Reddit AMA, didn't have any friends and so she would hang out at her future husband's university. Um, and she made friends there, which is nice to hear. All right, her husband Levi went to Mount Vernon Nazarene University, um, which is much more fundy and the two hit it off uh and let's see about her husband he was born in 1991 is all i know and according to reddit once again he was raised fundy and his family has 14 kids um and i don't know what they do for money but they own several properties originally kelly and her husband lived in a trailer on some land owned by the family and their current house uh, is right next to another property that the family owns i think that her husband currently works in computer repair i do know that it's a running theme in her marriage and on the internet that he is not a carpenter he just plays one on instagram there's countless projects in their old house that he's supposed to be working on and he takes forever to get to which shit man i don't know if he like what kind of person he is um it seems like he is not like a patriarchal jerk he's That was a squirrel. Um, it seems like he's not a patriarchal sexist jerk. He's just like a nice Christian dude, which is great. Um, and Kelly is the one that leads the family, which is how a lot of these trad wife situations are, really, I've noticed. It's the wife that wants to do it. And the husband's like, I don't really have the language to tell you why this is fucked up. But, you know, I enjoy busting in there and not doing any housework. Their house is 100 years old, and apparently it's on what did I say? A half acre. Bro, my house is also 100 years old and I have a backyard. I feel like that's the same exact thing. Kelly lives in town and she takes pictures at angles to make it look like she lives like in the prairie. I'm not kidding you. It's really funny. It appears that around 2015 or 2016, she um, got married to her husband, Levi, and they got rebaptized and joined a new church. Um, I don't know how fundy her church is. She talks about women speaking in the church, so um, it can't be that uh, sexist. Once again, shouts out to the Leaving Eden podcast. Um, they were talking about some of the language that Kelly was using in her early Tumblr posts, like talking about um, like a moment of salvation versus like a lifelong process being um, an indicator of maybe her being Baptist, probably American Baptist versus Southern Baptist. Just little things. Like I can't quite get a read on what her religion is because she will quote Bible verses not using the King James Bible, and she even has this Tumblr post where she says that evangelicalism is an antichrist religion, so I just can't get a read on this lady. <laughs> she got married, and I did look for wedding photos because I was like, surely this bitch is obsessed with photography and aesthetics. I bet her wedding was amazing, but she only has one little picture. Come on, I want to see it. <sighs> she only makes reels, but I'm like, she would probably make some kick-ass vlogs. Because I watch a lot of Christian vloggers, like 
and homemakers and things that you wouldn't expect that I would be into. She would do a great job at it, I really do think. Before we get into the current um, running memes of her life, I would like to talk about some old troubling posts that she's made. And some of them aren't that old. Uh, I just mean older than the current moment that I'm speaking and existing. (laughs) Alright, in one post she says that she really likes the book Biblical Womanhood by Lori Alexander. We've talked about Lori Alexander plenty on this channel. She is the um, OG trad wife. And then I found where somebody asked a question on her Tumblr and said, would you be friends with somebody who is gay? And she said, of course. And to answer your other question, I would definitely love them as much as my straight friends. I wouldn't necessarily agree with them acting on their feelings, but that wouldn't have any effect on my love for them. We've seen that argument time and time again, but it's God loves you in a gay way. Let's be clear. Why aren't you answering my gay question? Is it because that you think that gay people will go to hell because that's what it says in the Bible? No, I'm not answering it because I honestly don't know what I think. I am hesitant to address the subject of gays because I am not very educated in it. I do know that whether you are gay or not has nothing to do with whether you go to heaven or hell. It is whether or not you have asked and received Christ as your Lord and Savior. Romans 10, 13. This one I do not understand what what was the point of i feel like a nazi for the thoughtless behold the one who makes thoughts grow from nothing this is very silly because everyone does such a thing this photo shoot this was inspired by one of my favorite scenes of all literature can anyone guess it hint uncle tom's cabin now what the fuck is that about all right let's talk about her mental illnesses (laughs) god I think I just realized how fucked up my entire career is in that one sentence. When it comes to Kelly Havens, there is just a lot of examples of ableism going on in the Funny Star community. A lot of people talking about her. She's on her crazy pills. They're saying she's insane. And they make fun of her behavior. Um, They call her manic, dissociative, really inappropriate. And I don't know a damn snarker alive that does not have mental illnesses so please let's be nicer about this as a community and use empathy and think about how we would feel i'm kind of in a tricky place because i was just diagnosed with ocd yesterday morning and um this week has been like really really tough and i'm just trying to like get through it and get better and i'm on the medication now and i want you guys to know that like i want to get back on this site as soon as i can i just i don't want to push anything and um, I want to make sure that what I, what I post is always my best work. And if that means not doing a 365, then that's fine. And that's, you know, and that's God's will. And I just, I trust that, you know, I will, um, be taking the right path, you know, like I'll definitely get back into it when I'm feeling better. And, um, when I, I think that I can really do it to the best of my ability. Kelly likes to use Instagram as a therapist, and that's not cute. I love when people tell their stories and, you know, raise awareness of things and support each other, but it just feels like she's doing this in lieu of, instead of seeking help. She's praying about it on Instagram. And it's just really upsetting because, you know, you don't like to see people that you care about or in my case, people that you make videos about, you don't want to see them suffer. And it just sucks because a lot of people look up to her or at least people in her community look up to her and sharing a little bit about my struggle with anxiety this morning. I know my anxiety is not pleasing to him and I've been relying on it too long to push me to create. Can anyone else relate? I don't know how I feel about her saying that her anxiety is not pleasing to God. Maybe she means in the way that God doesn't want to see you suffer, but I feel like she's meaning it in the way that like she's not good enough or like this is not the version of herself that she wants to present to God. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? Here's another one where she says she's taking a fast day because I'm struggling to quiet down enough to see the next steps in some areas. When I fast, it's like light pours in and fills my soul. I let go of my fears and my mind goes under and my spirit breathes. I feel that deep love for him bubbling inside. I yield to his sweet leading. Listen here, Gwen Shamblin. I don't want to hear any of this shit about how you're fasting because you want to talk to God. You're fucking hungry and it's making you delirious. This is so dangerous, especially because there was 
was posts on her Tumblr that indicated she had struggled with disordered eating. And like, I understand fasting is a real legitimate religious principle, but I feel like a lot of these influencers use it as a reason to get into some bad behavior patterns. And then sometimes she says things in her captions in her poetry that she kind of has a point to but like she misses the mark a little bit and that's what I'm trying to say Kelly is clearly intelligent she's very talented and creative she has a huge imagination you know that naivete is gonna get her in trouble the old twisted tree stay inside and keep mommy company my husband said as he headed out the door to his workshop little James replied but mommy likes to be alone he was right. Mommy has always loved alone time, but it reached a point where Mommy didn't want anything else. It was true she was waging deep, thick, fiery battles that were no match for a four-year-old. The bouncy legs and bright green eyes seemed like a distraction from the war within. Mommy had become like the ancient, knotted, twisted tree by the prairie hiking trail, tucked back amongst blackberry thorns. Her mind was made of thick, heavy branches that twisted and twisted and had her tight in their grip. She had held her children back, waiting for it all to get untangled so she wouldn't hurt them. She had held them back, waiting until there were no thorns so they wouldn't get pierced. As James's words hung in the air, an ache came over me. It was time to change everything. Now was the moment. Eternity hangs on a moment, and this was the moment of change. I was taken to a few months back, when I felt my boys were an almost unbearable challenge. God spoke to my heart. He said, Kel, they are not your work. They are rest from your work. Rest. Our children are rest from our work. And I want to say that, like, I understand what she's trying to say there. She doesn't want to dump all of her adult emotional problems on these kids. And um, But I do also want her to know that raising children is work. It is labor. And um, that's another thing that bothers me about trad wives is they're all blaming these these injustices to them um, on feminism when they should be blaming capitalism capitalism robbed you of the the stay-at-home lifestyle that you yearn for um it's impossible to make the ends meet um and i do think that stay-at-home parents definitely deserve all the respect and clout and money that they deserve i wish that trad wives would realize their value i guess okay let's talk about some memes before we get into the inevitable conclusion. I'm sure she's nice. That's the thing. Like, I want to make fun of the absurd and the ridiculous things like the baby gym made of carrots. Oh, yeah. She has a spice cabinet in her bathroom. I don't know why. I think it's because she's trying to do like an open concept or something. I don't know. It's they're going to go bad, Kelly. Don't put them there. In this one, in this post from her old Tumblr, she says, over the past few months, God for me has been switched to the Swedish pronunciation. Good. It feels appropriately earthy. Ringing of sentiment rather than abstraction. It is nice to lean against the wall, tilt one's head upward and say, good. To feel as if one's words are involved in what means as they lean and look on with tears. I just am pic picturing Trixie with a Swedish accent trying to say, yes, I like to pray to good. One where it says, my family all cozied up watching my house tour. So she filmed her house tour in the house and then had them watch it on her MacBook and... <laughs> They're all clearly being held hostage there. Oh yeah, this this is not just snarkable. This is kind of fucked up. You know how there are accessibility features where it will describe a picture for blind people? Well, she abused that feature to humble brag about herself. A creative mama stops and slows down to nurse her teething baby in her bedroom. Behind her, on a set of shelves made by her husband, sits a stack of neatly folded handmade skirts, almost ready to be mailed all over the world. She waits patiently for time to finish her creative work, embracing the duty of being her children's gentle home. Oh yeah, the last thing. Marmy. I had to talk about Marmy. All right, so Kelly has a friend who she calls Marmy, who is a church elder, who it seems like from context clues that maybe Kelly was spending too much time with Marmy or, you know, putting too much emphasis on her relationship with her instead of focusing on her family. Or maybe Kelly was trying to put Marmy in a role that she hadn't signed up for. Like, it, Kelly seems like the type that's really into that wise older woman counsel situation. And I feel like maybe Marmy was like, um, yeah, you're fun to bake bread with. Could I dance for my husband and my children as I had danced for Marmy? Could I let them in the same way I had let her in? You see, it was all very simple. 
We are all lovebirds, hesitant, yet I let love in because it was unfamiliar. And they were roommates. Kelly is a creative at heart. Um, you know, she's always had a Flickr, a Tumblr, a blog spot. Now she's on Instagram. She makes reels. I'm surprised she doesn't have TikTok and, and YouTube. She does have a podcast, which... Um, is very interesting because let's just say she likes to sing more than I do. Come behold the wondrous mystery in the dawning of the King. He the theme of heaven's praises, robed in frail humanity. In the first episode, she talks about being overwhelmed with, you know, trying to keep her kids entertained and run a household and all that stuff. Things that many people, I'm sure, can relate to. Um, and she talks about how, you know, God has got her back. When the kids are bored, she just takes them outside and they entertain themselves with berries and sticks and things. Almost like she's letting God do the mothering. It was one of those moments where I was like, I don't have to fear even in motherhood, I don't have to fear of coming up with something for them to do every minute. I can go outside and I can trust that there's going to be something. There's going to be sticks. There's going to be a worm. There's going to be something that will excite them. And I can just rest um, and let God kind of do some mothering for me. And I've been wanting to write about that idea because it's kind of an interesting concept. Um, letting Mother Nature mother. <laughs> um, you know, I don't believe in Mother Nature, but just the creator. So, um... Her podcast is pretty boring. This user on Reddit, uh, they do some lovely recaps. But I did look at all of her reels because there wasn't very many. And in this one, the Fall Home Tour, she has a lot to say about how decorating your home will help you fight the good fight against Satan. As homemakers, we have the incredible opportunity to create with Christ a place that does not deny evil, but by its very recognition of it, shuts it out by the immensity of our home's pure light. Yeah, it's not that fucking serious. But above all, we decorate with a cheerful heart, a humble mind, and a meek spirit. We decorate with love. And I really believe that if we live in love, using everything we've been given, including our very homes and bodies, as tools to love, that decorating year by year and season by season will just happen in our eagerness to create a charming world for our families and ultimately anyone who longs for home. Okay, Kelly. I'll remember that line next time I spend $200 at Michael's and have to justify it to James. Nostalgia is like being pregnant with memory. Now what in the fuck is that supposed to mean? When our favorite girl in Calico, Caitlin, visited, I wasn't stranded, loving her with words alone. I got to pour into her with my home. She got to sit in the big comfy maroon chair that Levi's grandpa made. She got to taste my omelet pizza and coconut banana cake. She sipped from a mug I made and gazed through lace curtains. She also got to enjoy comforting and familiar bits of the outdoors, from the Indian corn, leaves, pine cones, and piles of apples around the house. And I hope that all of this helped her to find rest from the weary world and to know and believe the love God has for her. God, I wish somebody would talk about me the way that Kelly talks about romancing girl in Calico. The pools of unfrozen water were a dark emerald green flowing freely around the ice. The sun turned the snow into sparkling white waves. As I watched the moving water against the ice, I thought of the seasons and how gladly they came and went. I became resolved to live in alliance with the seasonal flow, to embrace the frozen times and the free-flowing times, to welcome the sowing and the reaping. The quiet river begged me to believe the frosty seasons of my life were no less magnificent in shade or stroke as the flowery summer ones in this living painting of life. Why the fuck is she getting in that frozen river in a dress? She's about to get a case of old-timey fucking frostbite i got a i got a whopper of a conclusion for you here <laughs> when it comes to kelly haven stickle i see a lonely christian woman with a big personality and more imagination than that one episode of spongebob but you can't remove context from life and i can't ignore her problematic posts 
While some of her posts can be chalked up to just being a dumbass teenager, her more recent posts about being God's mom and her weird dog whistles about preserving traditional beauty, well, they leave a bad taste in my mouth like a burnt honey spelt biscuit. I've seen people refer to Kelly as racist by omission, and I can see why that might be a harsh label, but I kind of agree with it. If white supremacist pages are reposting your content, in my opinion, you do have a duty to speak up about it, especially if you want to be an influencer and you want to be taken seriously and you want people to live like you do and believe the same things you do, you kind of need to speak up for yourself. Now, to be fair, I haven't actually seen screenshots of these racist pages reposting Kelly. Send them my way if you do see them because I would like to have them for research purposes. It's not like Mrs. Midwest where they post her all the time and she reposts and it's a whole symbiotic community. She does run in the same circles as these trad wives, which is its own concerning issue. And I cannot in good conscience ignore her very public friendship with Girl in Calico. And I don't think there are any excuses for this because I wouldn't have her do anything that I wouldn't do myself and in my actual real life, I've had to cut out people who had toxic, racist views and who whose morals were completely opposite of mine. Proverbs 13.20 says, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. So I want you to think about that when you keep associating with these shitty people. Furthermore, these charming yet horribly overproduced snapshots of Kelly's life are, in my opinion, a thin mask covering up views that are much more troubling and regressive. Look, I don't know where Kelly Havens was on January 6th, but I do think that she is a privileged white lady who either intentionally or unintentionally perpetuates white supremacist propaganda. Yes, it really is that deep, and no, I don't make the rules. The ideology behind Kelly Havens' lifestyle, while maybe not fully problematic on its own, is full of enough swastika-shaped holes that it absolutely cannot hold water. I do not believe that it is by accident that many of these photos would have looked just as at home in a propaganda poster about Nazi wives as it does on her carefully crafted Instagram. We've seen the same trad wife story played out before with Mrs. Midwest. People like her use a glamorized and whitewashed version of European Christian history to claim that our modern world has strayed from the values of old that made us great. While the curtain has certainly slipped in the past several years, this kind of content can still appeal to many kinds of folks. In my opinion, trad wife is just the cottage core version of the alt-right pipeline. And please don't misconstrue my words here when I say that. There's there's nothing wrong with the aesthetic of cottagecore, and God knows I love maxi skirts and gardening just as much as the next white bitch, but I also understand that there is always more layers to what is being presented. Instagram pages like Worth Fighting For and Biblical Gender Roles, just to name a few, long for days that never existed, and the content that they make does prop up fascism. That's why I don't think Mrs. Midwest or Kelly Havens is quaint and this is why I'm not just going to let bygones be bygones. Trad wives exist as a recruitment tool. Fascism needs women in order to satisfy the awful desires of their hyper-masculinized foot soldiers. What would the Nazis be without their dutiful wives that held down the domestic side of things? Who do you think was raising the Hitler youth? And I got one more quote for you, Kelly, in case you were wondering how I felt about your little fucking friendship. If you are neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. That was Desmond Tutu. Uh, Jerry Falwell is quaking right now. James wrote this last line here and I'm actually really proud of it. So please, enjoy your gardens and your old books and your loose leaf teas. Enjoy dreams of a lesbian homestead with your partner that loves you. And don't let Nazis into the party, Kelly. Not now or ever. And tell all the other trad wives to fuck off while you're at it too. You can't plant bulbs with us. Ooh, I don't know about you guys, but my hips hurt. Probably because I'm such a... I'm a dainty, frail woman and I got childbearing hips and I gotta be dainty. Anyway, fuck Kelly Havens. She's not my most hated fundy and she's definitely not my pet fundy. She's kind of in the middle. She's a neutral beige, just like her fucking house. Yeah, I don't really have much else. I thought there was more to her, um, but it turns out like a lot of stuff I wasn't comfortable snarking on after all, but I did find some stuff that I was proud of. Uh, some screenshots and videos and, and whatnot. How do you guys think? Do you think it's okay to snark on her? And to what extent? Anyway, I just can't figure her out. Kelly is so weird because she's definitely not trying to be like famous like J-Rod. 
but she's also like not trying to lay low either. Um, and she's very open with her mental illnesses, but she's also dismissive and acts like it's like a God problem. And she doesn't talk about politics overtly, but she does have dog whistles and she hangs out with Girl in Calico. So I don't know. The bitch is weird. Um, and I think her husband looks like he plays Friday Night Magic. Um, and I can say that because James used to be a judge. I hope you guys like my outfit. It's from Killstar. My hat is from Party City. <laughs> And if you are watching this video, currently we are going to be going live for patrons on Sunday. We do monthly patron-only streams um, because they pay my bills and they get special treatment. <laughs> Um, if you would like to support me in that way, you can pay $3 a month to be part of the official Fundy Fridays fan club, and that gets you access to the Discord, the monthly streams, and then there's a playlist of videos that's just for patrons that's like some stuff that I've unlisted, or it's like, there's a video of me shaving James's beard from a long time ago. There's, there's all kinds of funny shit, um, as well as I have the files for the Lesbian Socialist Republic poster. So you could do whatever you want with that. I love you guys very, very much. Remember to follow me on social media. Consensually smash that like and subscribe button. Buy my merch from Bonfire and Bonfire only. Follow James on social media. He's at James Funny Fridays. Yeah. Oh, I love him very much. I love you people so much. You'll see him later. Um, and then next week is Joe Rodriguez 4, which... It's the best one yet, I think. And then James has a spooky, scary special too. And then in November, I, I have an idea. I think I might talk about Kent Hovind and haven't decided who else. I might do a... Mm, no, I don't want to say it. Um, <laughs> love you. Bye. Love you, buys. I love the buys. I love... I love... <laughs> I love all the orientations. Except super straight. Um... Um, I will see you guys later. I love you very much and have a spooky weekend. Hi. Oh, you're leaving? I gotta go to Dungeons and Dragons. Bye.